is the Intel Arc B580 our saviour of 2025? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Dumb Down Tech. Today, as I said in the intro, we are having the Intel B580. I have finally managed to get hold of one and I can't lie, I didn't buy it for gaming. I bought it for my home server. But we have it, so we're going to test it as a gaming. But first of all, I bought this one, the reference one, because it's the prettiest one. Is it? Yes. Really? That sparkle one's grim. Oh, come on, the blue's lovely. No, it's horrible. So it has been used for about the last six weeks, eight weeks in my home server, which is now also my editing PC. It comes nicely packaged, as you can see. And then... Put that down without breaking anything. As you see, we've got nice writing. On the side here, we have the Intel logo here that does light up in white. It's not addressable in any way whatsoever. What's nice is it's only an eight pin connector. So it's very simple to connect to most systems and it's fairly low wattage as well, 190 watts. We've got our pass through for our fan here and this fan here will kick at the back. So no, kicking at the sides. That's where the fins are going. But that's it, it's just a nice matte black finish. I think it looks really smart in my system. Um, although my server will be changing and I won't be able to see it anymore. So why I bought a good looking card that'll be hidden. Yeah, typical dumb down tech things really, to be honest with you. But on that, there's no point in going into this too much. It is nice and easy to take apart by the looks of it. We've got six screws. So if you want to maintain it at some point in the future, it's going to be nice and easy for you. And that's really it, because everyone else has done the videos on this already when it first came out, what, six, nine months ago? <laughs> a while ago. Like <laughs> so it's been a bit of a while coming. Um, but what we're going to do now, we're going to quickly move on to some graphs and show you what the benchmarking is doing. So... Here we are having a look at the 1080 results. We've only compared it along with the 6700 XT as that is used about the same sort of price as the current value of the B580. And we also went with RX, RTX, sorry, 4070 as really that's the next step up that you're gonna get along any of the generations at the moment. So, as you can see, the RTX 4070 absolutely obliterates everything, but for the price you're looking at for the B580, it's very much on par with the RX 6700 XT, and both of them... What's it? It's a 68. I said 67. Oh, okay. My ears are deceiving me. It's very much on par with the RX 6700 XT, and while this 6700 XT does slightly go and perform a little bit better it's older hardware now and once we get to the 1440p you'll see that it does start to let the b580 catch up a fair bit um notably as you can see here that cyberpunk is a massive win relatively for the b580 so let's move on to the 1440p results and as you can see here again it's very similar results the rtx 4070 is just walking away with it but the similarities between the 6700 xt and this beautiful b580 are still there and as you can see the b580 is definitely more made for 1440 gaming as there's quite a drop off on some of these RX 6700 XT results from 1080p down to or up to 1440p. Whereas the Arc B580 is definitely not dropping anywhere near as far and it is maintaining its levels quite well, especially on these ray tracing games like uh, Cyberpunk where it's still maintaining that nice lead. And I could see that happening in the future as well for the continuation of this. So as we finish now with all them graphs, 
And I've got Alan waving in the background. Um, what do I actually think of the B580? I really like it. And as I said before, I haven't bought this for me to game on. It's for my home server that is now becoming my editing rig. I needed something with <clears throat> a good amount of VRAM that can help speed the editing up, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. And I could have got something used or cheaper, but I was very much intrigued by this card just by partly the look of it, as I've said, even that's going to be hidden. But Intel has really piqued my interest since they started coming out with all these art cards. And while the first generation wasn't fantastic, seeing the reviews that everyone else put at the actual time of launch, I, I was like, I want one. So thankfully my birthday was a little while ago and the family decided to club together to get me a thing as far as they was concerned. They was like, get him a computer or something. We don't know what he wants. So the wife said to me, what do you want? This. So here we are. Um, it cost, well, I suppose you're not really meant to know birthday surprises, but obviously I know the market. So it cost £280 for me. £278.99. Um, but now it's gone down. It's currently the beginning of July and you can actually get this for £239.99 on overclockers here in the UK. And that's less than MSRP of 250 which is fantastic. I, I think that's a bargain. How can you not go for a brand new graphics card with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6? Yeah, and you've got NVIDIA coming out with a 50-50, 8 gig at, was it pre ordered Hold on, hold on. That one, 259.99 for 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. Which apparently isn't even as good as a 4060. No, it's going to be worse than a 4060 because... They're trying to just multi-frame, multi-frame. How's that going to cope with anything to do with multi-frame? I don't know. You could try it for editing. Multi-editing? <laughs> <laughs> um, but realistically, the competitors that I think this has got at the moment, this is all looking at overclockers here in the UK. I had a quick brief look this morning. And around the price point, like I said, Alan's just noticed, the 50-50 is going to be 260 supposedly, but that's on pre-order. Um the 5060 8 gigabyte is actually going for 260. So how are they going to? What's going to line up there? If that's going to be the better card supposedly for 260, but then the new worst one comes out for 260. But it's still 8 gig. They're both 8 gig, but how are they both the same price? How is the 5050 not? 180. Well, everybody's been saying the 5060 is a 5050 anyway. Maybe they just decided to finally change the name. I suppose it's better than a 56 or so, no, 30, 58 gig, 30, 56 gig. Um, the 5060 Ti at 16 gigabytes, which is actually more reasonable, is 398. Still no. But the actual reasonable one, the only one I would rival this with personally at the moment is the RX 9060 XT, which as of this morning, beginning of July, 330 pounds for a 16 gigabyte. Okay, it's still GDDR6, not seven. But for that price, that's the only way I can see that's gonna be a competitor to this. The Intel and the AMD, them two are on their own. Nvidia, just in the bin. It's just nothing for budget gamers. <sighs> like I say, if 5050 was coming out 150 pounds, cool. Yeah. Right, fine, eight gigabytes, lovely. But, I think any eight gigabyte card now, I know everybody's off on this tangent about eight gigabyte cards. They can be good for certain uses when they're certain prices, not for these prices we're talking about here. Like this being 240 pounds currently, that's too expensive for eight gigabytes now. For how cheap it is for them to add the RAM on, the memory, I don't understand why they're not doing it. Uh, Personally, on my level, I'm going to say 12 gigabytes should be your starting point now, unless you're paying that 100 pounds, like I say. Um, but as we saw in the results, this at 12 gigabytes for what can be now 240 pounds for 1080 and 1440 gaming, it looks absolutely incredible. The results are there. It looks absolutely incredible if you buy this one and not the 
sapphire one. Is it sapphire? The blue one. Sparkle. Sparkle. Yeah. We'll get an Azrock. See, the other ones look all right, just not the sparkle. We should say as well what this was tested on. Oh, yes. Sorry. All this testing was done on our standard test bench, which is the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200. So they've all had the same oomph given to them. So, is this saviour of 2025? Yes and no. If you're on a budget and you're starting from the lower end and you're wanting 1440 gaming for the first time, this is a fantastic card to get. I can't lie, £240, if you can find it for that price, definitely buy this now. Go, I'll wait until you come back, go. I'm going. Right, so you I'll bought it? Back. I'm going. Right, see, he's going to buy it. Yeah. And the no, because that 9060 XT for £330 with 16 gigs of VRAM and just, it is a little bit better. It will perform a little bit more. It will give you better 1440 and more towards the 4K gaming, even though I don't recommend 4K gaming for anybody. But this, this is the hero that we've needed this year. Someone to come in, someone new, especially not new, new now, but relatively new, and come in and go, look, this is how it's done, lads. And give AMD and NVIDIA a slap. Because while I love AMD cards, I don't like NVIDIA cards, even though I'm running a 4070. This is coming in and game-changing things for us because it's given a third party to come in and just say, let's do it, let's have it. and. What more do we want? Like we want the competition because that's better for you and me, better for our wallets in the end once they've all calmed down a little bit and they realise they're all going to try and undercut each other ever so slightly to the point, hopefully, if they keep undercutting each other enough bit by bit, we might be um, getting them to pay us to take some cards. So that's it really. I, I'd like to have done a lot more with this card, but it's in use all of the time. Um, it's in my home server all the time on 24-7. I've been lucky to take it out today. Uh, everyone likes to use the home server, so the wife has her shows. And I wasn't allowed to turn it off. It was only because I let her go to her mum's for a day that I'm allowed to turn it off. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Come back for the next video, and we'll see you soon.